Once upon a time, there was a king of Egypt who suddenly fell ill. He lost his sight, and his health deteriorated to the point where he couldn't get out of bed. He gathered the wise men of the land, and they all agreed on the appropriate remedy. They must find the golden-headed fish and let the king taste its flesh. The king's only son, the prince, immediately set out to sea in search of this miraculous fish. For three months, the prince and his men pulled up one peculiar fish after another, but none of them had a golden head. On the last evening before they were to return home, on the hundredth day of searching, the prince happened to cast his net one last time. In his net, he caught the golden-headed fish. The prince lifted the fish into his arms to place it in a bowl of water, but when he looked into the fish's large, sad eyes, he could no longer carry out his mission. Instead, he spared the fish and let it dive back into the sea. So he returned home empty-handed, knowing well that his father would be angry with him, but he had probably not expected just how angry he would be. The old king was furious and called for the royal executioner. Your head shall pay for this! Your head shall pay for this! he shouted. However, while this was happening, a servant rushed to the queen and informed her of the king's rage. The queen fetched her son, dressed him in ordinary clothes, filled his pockets with silver and gold, and then hurried to the port, putting her son on a ship bound for a distant island. Listen to me, my son, she said. One day your father will regret his decision and wish you were with him again. Then he will be grateful that I saved your life. One last piece of advice I will give you. Never hire a man who demands payment at the end of each month. The prince found this advice peculiar, but he knew his mother was an unusually wise woman and therefore kept it in mind. After several weeks at sea, the ship reached an island covered with lush forests and colorful flowers. Villages of white houses dotted the landscape. The prince was immediately captivated by the island and bought a house to live in. He began searching for a suitable servant. Everyone who came to him declared that they wanted payment at the end of each month. But since the prince was determined to follow his mother's advice, he did not hire any of them. One day, a stranger from distant Arabia came to his house, seeking the position of a servant. When the prince asked about the man's desired salary, he replied, I do not want money. At the end of the year, you can see what my services have been worth, and then you can reward me as you see fit. The prince realized that the stranger was the kind of servant his mother had meant, and he hired him on the spot. On the backside of the lush island lay a desolate desert created by a monstrous creature that crawled out of the sea every day, burning the land with its foul breath. Additionally, the beast devoured all livestock and crops within its reach. The governor ruling the island sent soldiers there every day to fend off the monster, but for some reason they could never stay awake when the creature appeared. In the end, the governor promised his beautiful daughter to anyone who could rid them of the monster. As soon as the prince's servant heard about this, he went to the governor's palace. If my master kills the monster, how do you plan to reward him? He asked the governor. He will have my daughter and anything else he may desire that is within my power to give, replied the governor. Then let us draw up a contract on this, demanded the servant. And so it was done. That night, the prince's servant sneaked alone to the deserted shore on the island's backside. He had smeared himself with an oil that caused an unbearable itch, ensuring he stayed awake when the monster crawled out of the sea. It was a frightening creature, with features of both a serpent and a bird. However, the servant was not afraid. He approached the monster and delivered a powerful stab behind one of its ears. Apparently, that was the creature's most vulnerable spot, for it emitted a loud wail and rolled around dead on its back. The servant cut off the creature's ears and some of its fangs before heading home. The next morning, he told the prince what had happened and asked him to go to the governor with the trophies from the monster and claim credit for the deed. Never in my life, said the prince. It is you who killed it, and I refuse to take credit for myself. Do as I ask, replied the servant. 
There is a good reason for this. Trust me, and everything will go well for both of us. In the end, the prince relented and went to the governor, who was delighted with the story the young man had to tell. But as the governor went to fetch his daughter, the prince asked him instead for a fast ship that could take him and his servant out into the world. The governor was happy not to marry off his daughter just yet and gladly arranged for the ship for the prince, along with many noble stones and jewels as a travel fund. The prince and his servant sailed away and sailed and sailed until they reached a great kingdom. The servant went ashore to inquire about the place among the people. Soon he could return with exciting news. It turned out that the king was looking for a suitable husband for his daughter, and no less than a hundred young men had already married her but disappeared after the wedding night. The prince was intrigued by this mystery and immediately sought out the king to explain his interest as a prospective son-in-law. Finding eligible men in the country had become difficult, so the king was pleased when the prince appeared. That very evening, he arranged a wedding between the prince and the princess. After the festivities were over, the young couple went to the princess's room. It was a beautiful evening, and the prince sat looking out over the palace gardens in the moonlight. In a secluded part of the gardens, two men were digging a long pit. It took a moment for the prince to realize that it was his grave they were digging. No one expected him to survive either. He couldn't understand what could happen. The prince looked at the beautiful princess, who leaned against a pile of pillows and now dozed peacefully. But suddenly, she opened her mouth, and a black poisonous snake slithered out. The serpent headed towards the prince, who now understood what had happened to all the other suitors. Just then, the door burst open, and the prince's servant rushed in. With his dagger, he cut off the snake's head, and as the creature died, the evil enchantment was lifted. Now, the prince settled down with his wife, and they lived in the grand palace. But one day, a messenger arrived with a letter from Egypt. It was the prince's mother, informing him that his father had passed away. But before his death, he had named the prince as the heir to the entire kingdom. After so long on the run, the prince couldn't think of anything better than returning home. Thus, he took his swift ship and traveled to Egypt with the princess and his servant. Midway across the sea, the servant approached him and said, Now it is time for me to bid farewell, for the year has passed, and my service to you is complete. The prince was dismayed at the thought of losing his servant, who had also become his best friend. But he asked the man what reward he now wanted. Nothing, replied the man, for you have already given me life as a gift the day you released me back into the sea. I am, in fact, the golden-headed fish, the king of all fish, and I have merely repaid the debt of gratitude I owe you. With these words, the servant jumped overboard, but before he reached the water, his skin became scaly and his arms and legs turned into fins. Like a glint of gold in the water, the golden-headed fish shimmered before disappearing into the depths of the sea. In the end, the prince, now a king, ruled over his kingdom with wisdom and compassion. The princess, freed from the curse, became his devoted queen. The lessons of gratitude, sacrifice, and the enduring power of kindness were engraved in the hearts of all who heard this enchanting tale. And so, the story of the prince, the golden-headed fish, and the loyal servant became a timeless legend, reminding generations that sometimes the most magical moments arise from unexpected friendships and selfless acts of kindness.